In episode three of Agamemnon, the returning king salutes his city and the gods, who led him to victory and obliterated Troy. Ah, he can still smell the smoke from Troy's burning. Agamemnon tells the chorus he's heard his people's concerns. He understands some men feel jealous at others' good fortune, and many of his soldiers revealed themselves to be poor companions. Only Odysseus was loyal. Agamemnon plans to establish a democratic assembly in Argos to see what works and what infectious evil can be removed. Clytemnestra interrupts him, telling the chorus how much she loves her husband and how worried she has been about him. The many rumors of his death almost led her to suicide. Worried about rebellion in the city, she sent her son Orestes to stay with an ally in the city of Phocis. She salutes Agamemnon as a watchdog and mainstay for the city and family, telling him not to walk on common ground. She then has her assistants lay out a reddish-purple carpet for him to walk on from the chariot to the palace. But the king says the carpet is how we honor gods, not human beings. His fame and prosperity, he says, will speak for themselves. Clytemnestra protests Agamemnon must have made some promise to the gods to thwart her homecoming plan, and she and Agamemnon begin to argue. Clytemnestra says Agamemnon should be unashamed to walk across the carpet. Priam, the conquered king of Troy, would have done so. Agamemnon refuses, but when Clytemnestra compliments his strength, Agamemnon vainly agrees, hoping no god sees him and kills him out of envy. And oh yeah, before he forgets, Agamemnon then tells Clytemnestra to welcome Cassandra and treat her well. She is his spoil of war. Agamemnon enters the palace slowly while Clytemnestra speaks. Clytemnestra thanks the gods her family is wealthy, rich enough for plenty of valuable red carpet dye. But she would have given all the wealth for Agamemnon's life, hopeful the house will blossom into leaf since her king has returned. This is the only scene in which Agamemnon speaks. He's not much of a talker and tries to remain humble, but is primarily interested in his self-protection. His wife is the real leader in rhetoric. Agamemnon seems decent at first. He respects the chorus members and is willing to work with them. However, Agamemnon's metaphors for rooting out evil are violent, and though he doesn't want to anger the gods, he can't resist talking about his fame. Like the lion cub, Agamemnon cannot hide his nature. He thinks he's done right by casting a symbolic savage net around Troy, indicating the city's capture. They deserved it, and their destruction was the gods' idea, not his. Clytemnestra's over-the-top speech serves the purpose of giving her handmaidens time to roll out the symbolic red carpet. 